Welcome to the Dream Plan Start Grow Show, where the goal is to provide you tips and tools to create and execute your business plan for success. Welcome to the Dream Plan Start Grow Show. My name is Allison Turner. I am your host. I created this show to showcase other entrepreneurs on how they got started in business, what their successes have been, what some of their challenges have been in order to help you, either if you're new to business or maybe early on in your entrepreneurial journey, or even for those who are more seasoned. So today I have with me Brooke Joyner and her business is Back to Business. And I know you started that business relatively recently, um, actually maybe during the kind of tail end of this pandemic that we've been having. Um, so welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much, Allison. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So what gave you the idea of starting this business and explain the business a little bit to us? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, we our business started in November of 2021. Um, and kind of how we got started was that we my husband and I were working on another company together um, and we really over time understood that that company did not align with our values. Um, and so we kind of through a process of discernment, um, my husband got the idea, the um, business idea, the name of the company. Um, and so then we kind of went to work to determine if it was a valid idea right. <laughs> or well, not. Market research, huh? Um, exactly, exactly. Um, and, and what the business is, it's a small business directory and we help people shop local with values. So we only list independent small companies. So no franchises, no big chains, no large companies, larger than 30 employees. And the other piece is that the business owners can share their core values in their business listing. Okay. Um, and that's important because then consumers can search for businesses based on their own core values. And we list all business types, including nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, and our goal really is to shift the majority of consumer spending back to the local economy where it belongs, as well as bring values back into the marketplace. Um, so that's really what we're working on. No, oh, that's great. And what are your core values? Because I know you mentioned values for you know, if my business was listed, I could share my value, you know, my core values for my business. So what are the core values around your company? Yeah. So back to business, my husband and I, we are a traditional Catholic family. Mm -hmm. um, so we really value family values, obviously Christian Catholic base. Mm -hmm. um, and the other big piece for us is the free market element. Um, so and merit based Success being based on merit. So um, you can see that in, in our business model um, that it really, because the business is not just about our values, it's about your values. And this is one of our big differentiators um, because our values are very important and that defines how we run the business. Mm -hmm. um, but we really want to shine a light on your values and empower you to live without having to compromise on your values even if they're different from mine. Right. Um, and so there is that sort of freedom element. There is that free market, what the market is demanding. Um, and so those are some of the, the core values of the company. And the other big one is serving the business owners and the consumers. So you can see this in our business model itself. Um, we are ad free. There's no paid search. Um, we don't participate in any of those sort of online antics, you could say. Right. <laughs> um, and and because we really want to give people a different space with a um, more opportunity for them um, and give them a true best match um, because it is to bring the people together based on common values and empower them to shop locally with that. So. Okay. Well, that's great. And how did you come up with that idea? I mean, because obviously, I know you said you wanted to get the other business that you're in with your husband, you decided that didn't align with the values. Mm -hmm. I mean, was it, you know, since everything was shifted to, you know, we were more at home and people were going out less and, you know, especially in 2021, 
since if you launched in fall of 2021, obviously you had to start it earlier, <laughs> earlier yeah. in the year. So was it kind of based on some of that, you know, cause I know people gravitated towards Amazon, for example, during the pandemic, because they would deliver or they'd gravitated right. to delivery of a grocery store or whatever it was, which obviously are your bigger chains mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. it was easy. And I think a lot of people have gone, stayed in that model to some degree because sure. they've gotten to the point of like, oh, it's easy. I can just click a button. It shows up in my house a couple hours later and I don't have to do anything. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, truth be told, the idea itself um, because we were looking for something else, we have the experience of launching a company. Um, we were kind of looking out for an idea um, and we weren't sure what it was going to be. And it was actually kind of a divine intervention. Um, my husband just kind of received the idea. Yeah. We're Catholic. We believe God told him. <laughs> yeah. And that really is, is where the idea came from. And then in the subsequent days, we spent the next two to three days hammering out, you know, the functionality we wanted of the website, how we want to operate the business, you know, how we want to treat people, how we want to um, do all of these things. Right. Um, and that was fantastic <clears throat> to go through that. And, and it seemed really, really exciting. But the next step really was to get validation um, <laughs> because you can think you have a great idea <laughs> for as long as you want. <laughs> yeah. No one uses it or no one likes it, then uh, it really doesn't matter if you like the idea. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So at this point, we were thinking, wow, this is a great idea, you know. But OK, so I had a mentor from my the previous company um, in that industry, and she had left that industry and went into venture capital. OK. Um, and with tech startups and just had kind of become an expert with that. So I asked her um, if we could pitch to them, mm -hmm. to her, the firm that she's working with. Um, and so we did. And it was actually pretty quick. So it was, I think, nine or 10 days from wow. the idea to putting together a pitch deck for them. Jeez. That's quick. <laughs> and I didn't actually know what a pitch deck was before that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we I have a degree in business, but startup is really different from business. Yes, so. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so learn that quickly. And and so they, they sat with us and they really thought the idea was great, had a lot of positive feedback. And so we took that as, okay, let's start, let's start finding programmers. We need to build the website and we need to to get going on it. So it was pretty quick from that was in September and then the company was founded in November. Wow. So uh, it was very quick. Yeah. So, so I know you said the venture capitalists that you sat down with, did you actually get money from them or were they just doing you kind of a favor to let you pitch to them to get more validation for the idea? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. We did not make an ask at that time. Okay. Um, and we haven't uh, pitched for funding to date. Okay. Um, so that's something we're open to in the future, uh, as needed. Um, but as of right now, you know, we we're working with what we have and the resources available. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the, all those doors are certainly open and we're open to that in the future for sure. Mm -hmm. The right investors. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I know you, you and I've talked a little bit about the website and kind of the functionality of the website and you just mentioned programmers. So, I mean, how hard, because I know some other people I've interviewed that talk about, you know, they have like an app, for example, and obviously there's a pretty big cost that goes into an app, especially the one that this person um, mm -hmm. developed uh, around Delray Beach. So was there a large cost to developing this site since it does have the programming side to it or? I mean, I would say, so we, shortly after we founded the business, then our next kind of investment was to get involved with a quality mentoring and coaching program. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to work with uh, that same company. They also offer um, business services, including oh, web design. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a cost effective way yeah. um, to build the site. Um, and 
it, you know, it, it could have been a lot more <laughs> than it was. <laughs> I, we know that for sure. Right. Um, and then the great thing is also that the website is built with the groundwork laid for the app. So going from just website to website and application is actually going to be way less than we thought. Yeah. So um, yeah. just waiting for that right timing and sequencing to get that done as well. Mm -hmm. so. well that's great. And I know you, you just mentioned that you worked with a mentor kind of coach mm -hmm. in this process, which I think is an important thing. I mean, obviously, a piece of my services are business coaching for startup companies. And, um, you know, I always talk to if someone comes in with a business idea that they just want branding and a website for because we have that component, too. I always find that I end up coaching anyway, even if they're not coming that direction, because a lot of times they don't know all the pieces that need to go into it. They haven't thought everything through. They just think, oh, I need a, I need a logo and a website. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a thought process. So um, obviously you had experience from the first company that you guys built right. and going into this company, but um, how important was that in your process, the mentoring and the coaching that you received? I would say it was extremely important. So I'm, a big proponent of that, you know, finding the program that is right for right. you. Um, I do think we're just finishing a year now of, mm -hmm. of that program. And um, I definitely think we're farther than we would have been <laughs> had we been on our own. You know, we really had sort of come as far as we could on our own. You know, we, we had tried some programmers and progress was really slow and we... We weren't really sure what to do next. So there are many options, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but navigating which steps and then also the sequence of the steps was, was really hard to do. So um, we are big proponents of, of coaching and mentoring um, and also training, right? So this program, they have some courses. That's great. Um, they have one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, and it, but it's very high touch, very much. Yeah. A lot of availability, which I know is something you offer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it really makes a big difference. Not something we will be skimping on ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I know even, you know, I mean, obviously, like, Jack and I work with mentors as well, you know, and we're obviously further along in business, but I find that every kind of different step you're in, you can always learn more. So whether you've been in business for, you know, you're brand new in business, whether you've been in business for five years, 10 years, whatever, you know, always to help you get to that next step. Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. Know. And I'm grateful that we, you know, started that early. You know, right. I think a lot of startups or small business owners, they think maybe that's something extra. Maybe that's something <laughs> right. for later. That's something only if you want to get really big, maybe you would do. But really, I think making that investment at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, while it is tricky to <laughs> do that when you have all of the things to do, yeah. um, I don't think it's something that we would ever regret. And I, I would definitely advise others <laughs> to do the same. <laughs> yeah. Even if it means delaying three months, six months, right. the start of the business, to get that that coaching, that guidance. Yeah, and that's Very more valuable. solid foundation yes. to build on. Yeah, um, really important. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know you work with your husband. I mean, I work uh, with my partner, Jack, and so I know there are challenges working with a spouse mm -hmm. that right. you're living with. And I know before we came on camera, you mentioned a little bit, you know, one of the challenges <laughs> is kind of shutting off at night or, you know, in times when you have your children around, things like that. So how well, I mean, what's a trick that you've used to adapt? I mean, you guys owned the previous business together too, or the business is still existing, I guess. But um, mm -hmm. so what have you done to kind of adapt to that situation and, you know, make it work for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for us, we had a really big breakthrough um, just a few months ago. And what that big breakthrough is, is assigning roles and responsibilities based on skills alone. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And we do this in our business and we do this with our family okay. as well. Um, it's really easy to do that for your business. But when you're working with also a family member, somehow it it's not as automatic to do that with family roles. <laughs> so um, we were at a business conference <laughs> locally <laughs> um, and just looking at uh, one, the, one of the speakers said, you know, if you judge a goldfish based on how well they climb trees, <laughs> like you are going to look very poorly on the goldfish. You're going to think they're a terrible fish. Right. <laughs> and the goldfish is going to feel terrible about themselves because they're failing constantly. Um, and that, for whatever reason, that analogy really just made a lot of things click for us. So yeah. um, we, we assign roles and responsibilities based on skills alone. We are traditional Catholic people. So, you know, sometimes that means changing the roles in the household even though that is, goes against kind of our traditional values a little bit. Or, Saying he's a better chef or something? Or. <laughs> he's a phenomenal father. <laughs> he's That's so great. good with the kids. Um, so having him spend a little more time with them than maybe just the mom. And yeah. that's different than that traditional model, but it works. So mm. just going with what works, um, that is the biggest thing. And then... Also trying to have those boundaries between work and family. Um, it's are tough. It is. It is. But even if you just try, you can make a lot of progress on it. Because at first, with the first business that we launched, we didn't even try to keep it separate. <laughs> because we were just so like, we need to get this done. We need to get this right. done. Um, and then that created a lot of stress. You know, and then we recognize, hey, okay. And then we start separating and we start separating and it's a lot better now, yeah. you know. Um, those are lessons that we're going to bring into the new company as mm -hmm. well. So, and Do you both work out of your home, like a home office type of situation? For, for Back to Business, we do. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because our website is built. Right. Um, and um, our support, we do have some uh, remote support staff um, that help us out, mm -hmm. um, but there's not a ton of support required right now, so that's a pretty small portion. Right. Um, and then, yeah, we have we have a home office and <laughs> share time and things like that. Yeah. Know? I mean, I know that's, that's probably a harder thing. I mean, I know I've, we've worked together at home, like before we had this space, because when we were first dating, like I gave up I didn't have a space like this, but I just had like an executive office space mm -hmm. and he had his own company. I had my company. And then um, when we came together, I brought video into the company and then he he basically merged with my company. And uh, so we looked for space. So it took us probably two or three years to actually find this space, um, because obviously being a larger space, and we wanted to stay close, somewhat close to home if we could financially, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. a lot of stuff is uh, sky high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. You know, in the rent, the rent side right now. Um, so w yeah. once we found this place, I mean, this actually worked. I mean, it's literally two miles from our house. Oh, that's um, good. That's you know, but I tend to work here more than he does, even though <laughs> the studio part is. So he comes in for the, you know, filming or music or whatever it is, but a lot of the editing he does from his home office. But I typically come here every day, mm -hmm. um, you know, during the week. Mm -hmm. And so we have that separation. So even though we're working together, a lot of times we're in different locations, which right. I think is, is helpful. I think the one challenge we've had is like, I'm a morning person and he's a night person. So, <laughs> you know, I've been up since 435 in the morning. So by the time he gets up and, you know, starts moving at like 738, you know, I'm like, what about this? What about this? And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> it's like, I really haven't had any coffee yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just wait 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then I get, you know, I get home later at night, we have dinner and then he starts bringing something up in the work. I'm like, Ooh, I, my brain shut off at this point. Like I'm half asleep, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. sun's gone down. I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, I think that's like one of the challenges. I mean, overall we do well trying to separate to some degree. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not hundred percent by any means, but. Uh, well, and I think it's good to leave space for that too. 
right? Because maybe there's a deadline, maybe there's something particularly stressful. So you kind of have to break the rules and be willing to like, yes, this is bothering both of us. Let's just talk about it. Yeah. (laughs) And then we can move on. (laughs) But so, you know, being gracious, giving yourself that little bit of space, I think is really helpful too. Yeah. No, absolutely. So what have been some of your greatest challenges in launching this business? That's a good question. Um, You know, (laughs) I really like to view challenges as learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. So even using that verbiage. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So I would say. Your best warning opportunities. (laughs) Right. Right. We'll change it. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's okay. It's just I. Um. I don't, it's like, what have been difficult, you know? So, so some big challenges would be finding the right programmers. Mm -hmm. That's a really difficult one, but I mean, God just provided that. So we didn't actually have to solve that problem. That's good. (laughs) So that was nice. Um, A big challenge for us is um, finding the, the time to work in the business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, juggling, you know, our, our other job, which is, you know, the company that we launched together and the, you know, working on the business is, is really quite easy. Most people don't do that enough, right. um, but that can be done at night. And so okay. we've done a lot of that. so um i'm similar to jack you know i like to work at home but instead i like to work on my excel spreadsheets at home (laughs) as well (laughs) but and stay up late doing that i I enjoy that um but you know after all the planning is done the website is ready what comes next is working in the business and that's speaking to people sharing with them about our mission and and getting them listed on the website yep (laughs) Um, and so juggling our responsibilities with finding that time, um, that is definitely our biggest challenge. And that is why we said we've been trying to do that for about six months, (laughs) not making the progress that we would like to see. Um, and we recognize that. And so we're taking steps to exit the previous, move forward and just really go all in on, on our own company. Um, right. focusing on our family and our company um, mm-hmm. and just leaving the rest behind. So that was, I think, the biggest proactive step we could have taken. Right. Um, and it's difficult because we're leaving behind a lot of security. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, but it's what's needed because otherwise, if you're half and half, you're half here or you're half there. Oh, yeah. If you're... Two it's different never businesses. Never going to be hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. So we we said we need to to overcome that challenge that keeps showing up despite how we mix the schedule or do this or add a babysitter or whatever. It's never right. So that's our challenge, and that's what we're working on right now. Okay. Yeah. Now I know you and I met in the Boca Chamber. Yes. Um, down in South Florida. So, I mean, has that been a good place as far as networking goes for you? I know you, I know we both just came in in the last month Mm -hmm. or six weeks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively new. And then we hit all these holidays. So, um, (laughs) you probably haven't had a huge chance, but has that so far become been fruitful for you? I think, yes. I think that the um, Boca Raton Chamber of Commerce is excellent. Mm-hmm. I like um, is a high quality group. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And I do appreciate it is a little more on the serious side. <laughs> it is a little yes, less of is. the typical South Florida, you know, and that, that really works well for us. <laughs> we, we're just naturally a little more formal. And, and so it's nice to encounter a group like mm-hmm. that in a community like that. You know, after living, we lived in Fort Lauderdale, we lived in Pompano Beach, we lived in Deerfield Beach. We even lived almost in Dade County. We lived in oh, Miramar wow. for one year. Yeah. <laughs> all over the place. And and um, this was all for the previous job. Okay. We had to move. So um, a lot of the South Florida feel, <laughs> but it, when I met 
you know, started going to the Boca Raton Chamber, it was like, oh, they're, this is like more professional. This is more <laughs> natural for us. So, so we really appreciate that. And we have a lot of great events. Um, so we, I had someone get listed today, Excellent. um, and a couple more folks that are really interested. So, so far so good. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like it's more relationships. It's less transactional and, and more, so I can see it being really, really positive. Right. And especially cause we are focusing on the greater Boca area. Mm -hmm. You know, we really want to get a high concentration of businesses and a high concentration of consumers that want to shop local. So we kind of selected Boca as this sort of test area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I know a lot of new business owners always, you know, obviously they need business. That's the, right, right. you know, you yeah. start a company and you're like, okay, now what do I do? I got the website up, I got, you know, I can do whatever the service is or the product and, but now I need customers. Yeah, right. Because um, I know when you and I talked last, you were, kind of on the verge of monetizing things, right. you know, but you needed a X amount of um, listings, I guess, that you were going right. for um, in order to make that happen. So exactly, exactly. So, so. yeah, because we, we really want to be able to prove to folks that it works before we charge them. Right. This kind of goes back to that core value of serving, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of companies will say, you can pay and then, and then see, you know, <laughs> And we just don't feel good doing that, you know? Yeah. And and so um, we're working towards getting to those metrics so then we can we can prove it, yeah. you know? So a lot of business owners don't necessarily understand metrics mm -hmm. and how to handle metrics um, or even read metrics. You know, I always ask new companies that may be coming in to do like branding and a website, how are you going to drive traffic to this? Or, you know, if they're not willing to pay for either ongoing SEO or build out more SEO pieces, you know, because you can do things on the website, but that's only one small piece of SEO and it's not the whole thing, which a lot of people I don't think fully understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, those who have been in business do, but a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to build a website and people are all going to find me. And I'm like, no, it really doesn't work that way. You know, unless you're like the only person that actually does whatever this is, which good luck finding right. that, <laughs> that small niche. And then probably people aren't searching for that niche if you're the one person that does it. Exactly. Um, that's where it's a little bit harder. So you're right in the sense that you obviously have to prove the metrics, but also, you know, so it's understandable to kind of the average business owner that maybe doesn't fully get, you know, I ask people about Google Analytics, like new clients that come in that have a website. I'm like, do you have Google Analytics? Like what kind of traffic's going to the site? And they're like, I don't know. I mean, that's usually the response I get. Now, some of them do have it. And so, but I'm like, didn't your web person like put it in there at least? So you could like look and see like, am I getting yeah. any hits on the website? Like two, 10, 200, you know? Yeah. It's tricky. It's tricky because this you know, business owner, you're juggling so many right. tasks and a lot of them, you're learning something new on a lot of those things. So yeah. <laughs> between the learning and the doing the minimum just to, to have the business take off, you know, it's it's good to be able to rely on experts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, yes. because we can't do it all on our own. No. You know? And I think that's, you know, one of the challenges when you, especially if you're starting a business on your own, mm -hmm. you know, you obviously had your husband and, it, you know, you hired a programmer and things and hired the coaches, you know, but a lot of people, if they don't have the budget to do that, they started on their own and they become everything. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're the brander, mm -hmm. the website mm -hmm. designer, the, you know, they create their own social media accounts. So they're the marketer, they're the salesperson, they're the provider of whatever the service or product is. So they do it all. You know, so they're coming out of a job where here was your job description and you fit in this little box right here in this bigger company. And now you are the company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're doing everything. Yeah. And uh, I think that's probably one of the greatest challenges for new business owners is um, that piece mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not knowing, you know, how to balance your time, how to manage your time, um, which we just talked about. And then you know, knowing that you still need the sales, but you need certain aspects put in place in order to get the sales and. <laughs> exactly. Well, and the other element that we, with a coach that we work with, you know, really big on systems and, and 
a lot of times it's, oh, well, build the system as you're learning because you want to be optimizing so that right. you're prepared to scale when the time comes. So you have the data. And sometimes it's like, I don't even know what works yet. <laughs> I, I, I really need to run some trials here. Like, <laughs> I've run a few processes through, maybe like 10 different contacts or something just to try it because, you know, so sometimes it, it, can, it, it can be overwhelming, you know, trying to optimize everything. And, mm -hmm. All of those wearing all of those hats, you know, it's a lot, but yes, I don't know how you do it with children in the picture too. I mean, uh, you I mean, know, kudos to you I, and your well, husband. Thank you. <laughs> Cause I mean, you know, when I started this company, I started with a, a business partner before Jack and, um, like nine years ago and, mm -hmm. you know, she and I both, we didn't have kids. I mean, I had fur, fur babies, but, uh, you know, not kids that you had to go pick up from school and, you know, they're sick and you have to stay home with them, you know, things like that. And so I have the utmost respect for people that, um, can run a business with kids. Cause I'm like, you know, I don't even, I mean, I know when you're put in the position, obviously you make it work, but right, right. you know, that was, I'm always like, how do you do it? Especially when you have multiple, you know, like one, which, you know, one child we is have, pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> we have the one which, you know, but she was already, I think she, when Jack and I first started dating, she was like 11. And so, you know, she was already kind of pulling away and being more independent. And, um, so while I was in the picture for sure, it wasn't like, Hey, can you keep me occupied or I need this or I need that. And, you know, she was already at that point of, wanting to do after school stuff with their friends and not stay at home with, you know, stepmom and dad. <laughs> yeah. When they can dress themselves, brush their teeth, <laughs> right. eat food independently, these things really make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's really great because we, my husband and I, we, we love the idea of, of a family business, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we also homeschool our children. Okay. Um, oh, Jesus, so you do that too? We do. Wow. We do. We, we don't compromise on anything. That's, that's our problem. <laughs> you know, I actually, and our, Even bigger our most recent uh, boss actually said that that is the, one of the issues he thinks that I have is that I don't compromise on my values. <laughs> and I took that as a huge compliment <laughs> and really a sign we're doing the right business here for mm -hmm. our, for us. But um, with that, you know, we want to educate the children the best possible. Mm -hmm. And one of those ways is by including them in the business. Okay. And, and you great. can't do that when you work for someone else, you no. know, when you have that high stress environment, you know, it, it's someone, it's way over their heads. They can, you cannot even break it down to explain to them what's going on. No. <laughs> um, whereas for our own business, you know, I can say, oh, you know, mommy has this meeting, you know, and we're going to talk about the website, you know, and they can sit there and read their book or color their picture, whatever it is, and they can listen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a few weeks back, I had to go to the bank, do some business at the bank. So I said, well, they can come. They can sit there, you know, and learn that you know, when you go to the bank, you sit down at the, the banker, you know, you sign some papers, right. <laughs> you have to be good, you uh -huh. have to act civilized. So these sort of little lessons mm -hmm. that we really want to teach them because God willing, we want them to take over the business. Yeah. No. So, and that, you can't learn that. No. At school. And you can't oh, learn that starting when not. you're 25. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely can't learn it at school. So... You know, because I um, heard um, a while back that um, one very famous politician who's really good at business, um, his kids, they would come home from school and they would sit in and listen to him negotiate deals. Mm -hmm. And now his children run that empire. And I just thought, hmm, that is really profound. You know, they could have been doing anything. Right. Right. They had all their resources available to them, but the best use of their time was to listen on the business. Mm -hmm. And that was so profound to me. And so we're trying to find ways to incorporate them. Um, okay. And then the other trick is when you have to do the real work, you have to have help. And 
That's the other big trick because <laughs> it's not fair to you as a parent and it's not fair to the business that you're working on and it's not fair to them if you're yeah. trying to do it all. Yeah. And it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that one took me a long time, a really long time to to accept because as, as parents, you know, we want to we want to believe we can do anything right. and we can do a lot, you know, um, but also it's not. You want to make sure you're doing your best at everything that you do. And if that means being a mother or a father, you should do that 100 percent when you're with them. Mm -hmm. And what that does then is it mentally frees you up to be 100 percent present when you're working. Mm -hmm. So not being afraid to, to ask for help or with my husband, share the responsibility, because it's really just us two. We don't have very much outside help, right. like at all. <laughs> <laughs> so those are kind of the best tips that I found. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, I think you make a great point, especially the, you know, have that focus on whatever you're doing at 100%. Because mm -hmm. um, I think in our world today, I think that's one of the things I see with some of the younger generation is they're so distracted, especially with you know, the phones and the iPads and the, blah, you know, the social media and everything. And so they're all over the place and they're never 100% focused on anything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and even, you know, us in running the business, it's really like, okay, I'm just focusing on this project. I'm not answering the phone calls right now. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing X, Y, and Z. A lot of times I'll turn my email off or close my email browser so it's not dinging at me. You know, I see the little dot up there. It's like, oh, I got a new email. I got to go check on it. <laughs> you know, so it's always that distraction because I think we're in that distracted age now mm -hmm. with the Internet being so critical, which obviously is a huge piece of your business um, of and my business. And yeah. so but we're in that distracted age where you have to have that focus on, mm -hmm. you know, 100 percent. And then, like you said, it allows you to then to focus 100 percent on family or, you know, whatever else you're doing um, mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. And in, in the early years of launching the other company, we would do the multitasking constantly. <laughs> Mentally exhausting. Yeah. I mean, and, and then I like got into some research about that and it's like, I, it depletes your mental energy yeah. so much more quickly. And it's like, okay, I, I, I cannot really afford to have my mental energy depleted. I'm really doing a lot here. And, and that wasn't even our own company, you know, and I had just had our third baby at that time. <laughs> um, and so then, you know, the monotasking, like you said, is like a lifesaver because you can continue to multitask. I'll tell you, there's nothing on this planet more miserable <laughs> then creating a very large and very important invoice with a lot of details while also caring for children under the age of five. Oh. It is torture yeah. for everybody. And it's so not fair to the kids and the mental stress. <laughs> it's so bad. And so I was doing that for a long time until it's like, no. <laughs> Because you do that enough, I mean, that like change you psychologically living at that level of stress. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. it's like, we can't do this anymore. So um, definitely learn that the hard way. But the monotasking is, is also a powerful tool, right? So it gets you out of that kind of toxic multitasking that drains uh -huh. all that energy. And then you can really leverage it and um, do some amazing things that you wouldn't even think are possible. So. Yeah. Very powerful. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds great. And what has been, you know, one of your bigger successes? I know early on in this company, mm -hmm. what do you find like one of your bigger successes has been? So I think one of the biggest successes is is speaking to business owners and, and hearing their stories and and um, making them feel heard and, and mm -hmm. connecting with them. I mean, I really love talking to business owners. <laughs> And I mean, right now our, our li business listings are free. So I, it's really an active service, you know? Right. Um, and, but I just love, you know, because people, they, they say like, wow, you're really trying to just help me out. 
you mm-hmm. know, and you're not going to charge me a thousand dollars a month in ads ever. Right. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm really not, I really do care, you know? And, and so being able to be so genuine with people, they feel that and they feel so cared about and so valued. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that. And, and I love hearing their stories. I mean, business owners are amazing people. Um, and I am so humbled that I can actually make a living <laughs> serving these people. Right. So that is like our biggest success so far, honestly. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I think that's interesting because I think, you know, in this day and age, a lot of that goes out the window to some degree. And oh, I know yeah. it's yeah. it's a challenge even, you know, for me in the scheduling. I mean, I meet people networking and then do my best to connect with them. And sometimes it's a longer conversation. Sometimes it's a shorter conversation. Sometimes they're distracted. Sometimes I might be distracted, you know, and it obviously mm-hmm. works both ways. And, um, but I think, like you said, having that person feel heard and hearing their story. I mean, that's, you know, one of the reasons I started this was really to, you know, connect with other business owners and share those stories for someone that maybe either wants to start a company or, you know, is early on in their company or even, you know, I've had some interesting uh, guests where they've been in business for five or 10 years. And even some of those tips, you know, can help a business owner that's been in business for five or 10 years, you know, depending mm-hmm. on where they are in their business. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, because each of us is on our own, our own journey and our own kind of trajectory. Um, Absolutely. So I think that's a, that's an important point because I know you and I've had that kind of longer conversation on the phone, um, which I appreciated. And a lot of times that doesn't happen. And mm-hmm. I find with new business owners that I get, that does happen, which is, you know, one of the reasons I really love working with them because they are so um, appreciative of the information, mm-hmm. but they're also mm-hmm. interested and engaged. So they're not just, you know, sometimes the the other business owners and nothing against that, but they're like, I just need this done here. Here I'm handing you the reins and you do it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's a different Mm -hmm. relationship. It's still a valid relationship for sure. But I think that connection piece. Mm -hmm. I think it's huge. And I, I, similar to you, I found that the newer businesses, they're very quick to warm up to us Mm -hmm. because they're like, Oh, you really want to help me. Right. And you know, and they're also very passionate about what they're doing and um, they're in the skills, really deep in their skills and the, which is exciting. So, but sometimes some of the veteran business owners will be like, okay, what's in it for me? <laughs> it is more transactional um, for some of them. Right. The only person who's ever given me a hard no, it was, okay, what do I get out of the listing? And it's like, well, we're working on that. You know, here's, yeah, here's what I can building. tell you right now. <laughs> right. You know, it's a building we process. Can, so. We can do this for you and you'll be here and I'll promote you here. Um, and that wasn't enough. And that's OK. Oh, um, not everyone's your ideal client. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but the new newer businesses, they they do want to engage. And so it's, it is more fun, mm-hmm. you know, and. Um, of course, if we can be a small part in, in them launching successfully, then well, yeah, it only we're helps just you guys over the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you bring both both people up at the same or both businesses up at the same time. Exactly, exactly. But then some other long term business owners too. Some of them mm-hmm. are, and maybe I don't know if it's that they're more a little more comfortable in their business or what it is, but they will then give that time. Right. right. And it um, sometimes those connections are just amazing. So yeah. maybe it's also personality based, too. I, right. I'm not sure. I'm kind of figuring that out, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I mean, I think it's just dependent on somewhat the person that you interact with. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then obviously some people it takes longer to kind of click, you know, or mm. build that relationship. Yeah. You know, which is why you have in chambers and other things, you know, you have the category specific leads group where you can kind of build over time. So it's not Mm -hmm. just you walk into an event and you're, you know, I don't want to say selling because you're really building relationships, but a lot of people treat it as like, okay, I've got like this event for an hour and a half and I got to go whatever, you know, business cards to everybody. Yeah, (laughs) I know. I, I still see that. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, yeah, in the Delray chamber that we're also in, um, 
I'm in a weeds group and we had uh, a gentleman that was relatively, um, I guess, newer to networking, but he's been in business a long time. So I'm thinking maybe it's more like the old school, you know, where he just got business through referrals. I'm not really sure because Mm -hmm. he was asking me, he came to a group and he asked me a bunch of questions about, um, you know, how it was structured and what, you know, how long he had to talk. I mean, it was like he was completely unfamiliar with the process. But as I said, he's probably in his late 50s or 60s, you know, early 60s or whatever. And he's been in business for a while. It's just um, he's less familiar. I guess he's gotten business a different way, which Mm -hmm. kudos to him. Um, But it was just interesting because I was like, huh. That's interesting, you know. <laughs> well, it's another one of those skill sets, right? Yeah. That we have to develop. And right. <laughs> sometimes it's developed earlier and other people maybe later, right? And, so. Yeah, and you have to have that comfort level with it or yeah. or be willing to be open to gaining that comfort level. Mm-hmm. You know, which I think is the bigger kind of learning piece. I know when mm-hmm. I first started this business with this business partner, I'm the introvert and she was the extrovert, and she was like, you go out and network. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like looking at her like she had like eight heads. Cause I was like, what do you mean? Like you're the, like you're the extrovert. I mean, she can, she could control a room, you know? I mean, like I'm the introvert. So you get put me in some huge group. I'm just like, okay, let me see if I can find one person that's like me that hasn't, it's not talking to somebody. And then I interact that way as opposed to walking up to like a group of five people that are engaged in a conversation, you know? And so um, but I learned quickly. I mean, so that's the roles we played, which was, okay. and so I was the one out at, at the time it was Delray chamber at like 90% of the events of the Delray chamber. And she was acting more as the closer. So I would bring in potential clients mm. and then she was acting more in that closing arena. Got it. Um, and she still interacted with people on the phone and things like that, mm-hmm. that she already knew, but it was like, she wasn't as much out networking. So, um, it was kind of a trial by fire <laughs> situ- yeah, right. situation right. because I was like, okay, I got to learn this whole thing very quickly. Cause, Just uh, add this to your list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I think that's one of the things when you're a new business owner, like if it's just you mm-hmm. and that's not your strength, you have to figure out how to make it your strength, you know, or yeah. at least be learn enough about it you know, where you can find certain groups or that you're comfortable in, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, cause I have had business owners that haven't had been comfortable doing that. You know, mm-hmm. they've like, we just want to do it all online. But I'm like, well, you still have to talk to people at some point, you know, you're still selling this service and people are going to want to speak to you. They're not just going <laughs> to sign, you know, they're not just going to sign up and hand you money most places, you know, I mean, unless it's a product. Obviously, if you're selling a T-shirt or something, that's a little different. But, right, you know, right. but for a service, you're not going to most people are not just going to sign up and hand you money. Right. If there's yeah. no one to speak to. Yeah. They need to know, like and trust you. So right. if they don't know who you are, <laughs> that's going to be really slow, much slow, much slower process. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know we, we talked a little bit about the family and how your family's integrating into the business and mm-hmm. how you bring your kids mm-hmm. with you to certain appointments and things like that. Um, have there ever been any challenges having kind of the larger, I know you have three kids with the fourth one on the mm-hmm. way. Um, any challenges that you've encountered around, you know, having the family with the businesses? I know you have. Yeah. I, you know, for us, you know, because it is, Society certainly expects you to send your children to public school and parents can be free to work. And that's Mm -hmm. how it should be. Um, So going against that sort of norm is always challenging Mm -hmm. um, because then that means we have more time with them to take care of them. (laughs) Um, And so that is really difficult. But I just, after having the experience of working for someone else while being with them, like, especially during the pandemic, they were with us all the time, (laughs) right? you know, like everybody, but we had been doing it already for a whole year before that. Okay. And so it wasn't a big change, but we, so, um, that was really hard, you know, versus for our own company, we can set the times we can 
set the deadlines. We can do these things. Mm -hmm. um, and that really makes the biggest difference. Okay. And and I do think that experience from before informs what we do now right. <laughs> quite, oh, quite a bit. Um, you know, so we're able to recognize when, hey, like the kids are kind of tired of listening to us talk about work. So, you know, <laughs> someone take them to the museum and the other person work now or right. time for the grandparents to come to town for a visit because <laughs> we <laughs> so need we two need weeks now. So, <laughs> you know, these types of things. Um, and then, you know, it's exciting because also as they get older, my husband is from Italy. Oh. I'm from okay. Colorado. Um, so as they get older, you know, they can go to Italy for the summer and be with their grandparents and their cousins and there their you go. aunts and uncles, or they can go to Colorado. You know, they like the snow. Okay. Oh. Um, that's a strange thing about my children. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, I don't, I'm from there. I actually, I used to snowboard a hundred days a year. Wow. So I, 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 I used like to love that. Almost a third. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a lot. Um, that's not me anymore. That's not, I, I love South Florida weather. So sometimes the kids can go to Colorado for a month or two in the winter, right? Because then they're living those experiences. Right. They mm -hmm. can take their school with them. Yep. And we can have these kind of big work bursts and stuff. So yeah. it's just kind of a whole life approach mm -hmm. that um, I'm finding more and more people in this area are kind of embracing which I am really excited about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Makes us feel less I mean, alone. <laughs> I, know, I don't know a lot of people here, but I know through one of the coaching programs I was in at one point, it was a year long coaching program. There was a couple that was in it and they are currently, I think they're currently on like a two or three year around the world. So they're running their business oh, neat. and they're traveling with their mm -hmm. kids because at one point they were like, we're looking for a videographer to basically come with us on vacation. I was like, darn it. Yeah, because at the time, <laughs> Sabrina was still like 16. I was like, yeah. like we could just go because I could run my business from anywhere. So I was uh -huh. like, you know, That's so great. I was like, we could go with them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. But um, no, but they were doing like a two, I, don't, I think they've been on the road maybe a year now because I see their wow. posts on social media. Oh. They post kind of where they are and they show a couple of pictures and then uh, just to kind of keep people updated. And, mm -hmm. but I know they have uh, some kind of video person with them. That's, you know, but that's their education for their kids is yeah. taking them around the world. So, and then they run, I can't remember what their, <laughs> can't remember what their business <laughs> is, but they're running along, you know, along with their travel. So. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in, in Boca Raton there, this is kind of a thing that's starting out. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually a great place or a business that's listed with us. Um, they have co-working like private offices and co-working spaces yeah. mm -hmm. with child care provided. Oh, wow. And it's, it's cool. drop in huh. up to four hours a day. Huh. So <laughs> that's great. <laughs> like, and, and, you know, so amazing to see this sort of trend, you know, um, so that, you know, people, they can have their business, they can dedicate however much they want to their family, because some people mm -hmm. want to be just in, that's their thing and no judgment. Right. But um, for people who want to be there and be very involved, it's nice to, yeah. to have that option. Oh, absolutely. And that's a big driving force for us, you know, is not having to put our children last. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and thanks be to God, we 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 have the opportunity, and we're doing everything we can to build the you know build the opportunity and build the business, um, and the fact that we can do that while serving other people, mm -hmm. it's just really great. Yeah, <laughs> we're yeah, really I love that. really happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So as we start to wind down today, I always ask at the close of every interview. If there was one thing that you could share with someone that wanted to start a business and maybe something, and you've shared several things today, but if you would narrow like one thing that really has helped kind of propel you to that next level, mm -hmm. um, what would that be? Yeah. So I would say, um, and maybe this isn't the best advice for, for all of your listeners or viewers, um, but I would say, um, grow in holiness. Okay. 
because when you focus on that, then I think it's easier to discern the next steps forward Mm -hmm. Um, because faith is obviously huge for us. Um, And that's something we're always working on. And the more we work on that, things just kind of come together. (laughs) (laughs) You know, ideas or resources or connections or whatever it is seems to just be provided. Right. So that's definitely an unorthodox piece of business advice, yeah. but it is really my my best mm-hmm. that I like to share. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think that's, that's good. And I think, you know, and I take that as, you know, which will be a little bit different take than what you have on it, because I know you're traditional Catholic, but I take that as, you know, whatever your, you know, higher power is, you mm-hmm. know, of having that faith in that being, you know, in, in that relationship, um, because I think you can have it in many different ways. You don't have to necessarily be in this, my own personal opinion, obviously, sure, sure. uh, the traditional Catholic, or, I mean, I am more Episcopal at this point and, um, spiritual. So, but I find that that faith for me is, is critical, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. you can either operate out of a lot of uh, business owners operate on more in that fear base. Mm-hmm. And when you're there, Mm-hmm. You become more reactive versus, you know, yes. proactive and where things, like you said, come to you because you're open to those opportunities. Mm-hmm. You have that connection um, to, you know, whoever you're calling your your higher calling spirit, whatever you want to call God, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, so I think that's an important piece. Yes. Yeah, the faith piece. And then with the growing with holiness, too, I think maybe even, you know, identifying some, just trying to think about almost in a secular term, terminology, maybe identifying some type of ideals. Yeah. Right. Personal ideals that you want to be working towards. Right. Um, whether that be skills, uh, abilities, yeah. resolving weaknesses that you have, whatever, yeah. whatever they are, you know, and always working towards that. Right. Um, yeah. You know, whatever that looks like for people. Yeah. 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 I mean, having your personal core values, your company core values and yes. really, yeah, no, absolutely. Mm. And if anyone had any questions about how to get listed on your website or you wanted more information, I mean, I assume your service area is South Florida, right? Yeah, so we're primarily focusing on greater Boca Raton area. Okay. Um, we do have some businesses in North Broward. Um, and anyone, uh, some companies, they do e-commerce anyway. Right. Um, so, you know, being in West Palm Beach is pretty local when you're talking right. e-commerce. Exactly. So really, the tri-county area, we're, we won't say no to anybody. Okay. Um, but, yep, they can visit our website, mm-hmm. um, getbacktheNumber2Business.com. And I'm sure that'll be on the notes and stuff. But um, we would love to 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 have and be able to support as many business owners in this area as possible. If you would like to search businesses, um, visit our website. The search engine is on the homepage. Um, you can search food and beverage, retail, professional services, recreation, and nonprofits. Um, and the other thing too, nonprofits are free forever. Ah, I and like that. yeah, I got a bunch of those because we figured. <laughs> People who want to shop according to their core values would also want to give of their time and treasure according to their core right. values. Mm-hmm. So we said, hey, let's let's add them. And we are more flexible in the size of the nonprofits. Okay. Um, they don't have to be as strict of the 30 or less, you know, um, right. because we just really want to be able to make a difference for them as well. Yeah. So oh, that's um, great. So, yeah, if you want to shop or you want to list, visit our website um, and uh, get in touch with us. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for joining me today, Brooke. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank it's you. It's been so great much. having you on the show. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for joining us on the Dream Plan Start Grow show. Again, my name is Allison Turner. Today I had with me Brooke from Back to Business, and she just shared your, her information. If you have any questions for me on either how to start a business or maybe you're newer to in business, I do offer a complimentary consultation. You can go to my website, dreamplanstartgrow.com, and set that up directly on the site, or feel free to send me an email at success at dreamplanstartgrow. 
Thank you very much. And we will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in to the Dream Plan Start Grow podcast with Allison Turner. If you like what you heard, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Join the Dream Plan Start Grow community by following us on Facebook or Instagram at Dream Plan Start Grow. See you in the next episode.